Greetings, Synergia fellow participants. My name is Julie MacArthur. I'm uh, the leader and the co-author of the module in uh, week six, which we're in right now. We're just about to start on energy democracy. I work at the University of Auckland in New Zealand, and my main research area there is actually uh, community and local energy developments. Um, I look at this in a comparative perspective, so in New Zealand where I live, but also Canada, the UK, uh, Denmark, and a number of other countries. I'm really excited about this week and being part of this course because, of course, what we're really interested in doing is looking at how how commonsing, how reorganizing the ownership and distribution of resources and the benefits from them can really aid in in um, addressing the big challenges we're facing today, not just with climate change, and, but with things like energy poverty, with things like the deficit in democracy. So people just feeling um, disconnected and disempowered in general in many, many ways. Um, and the ways that that affects their lives and mental health. And I mean, there's so many different connections through each of the weeks, but our focus really has been on what's going on at the local level that's reinvigorating, that's exciting, that's really about resistance and reclaiming. Um, and then also what is happening at the national and the, and the, and the global levels. So this multi-level approach, because indeed a lot of the initiatives that happen at the grassroots um, are doing so in very distinct ways in, in different national settings. And they're deeply informed by challenges and opportunities set at the global level. So just focusing on one case here, or one case there, successful or not successful, doesn't really give a picture of how things can be spread and deepened and really locked in, particularly as we see massive political unrest and huge swings in um, many countries, for example, in the UK in recent years with Brexit, non-Brexit, Brexit. Brexit. Um, <clears throat> So this week, uh, the first thing I wanted to say was just to introduce myself. So I, I am Canadian, but I live in New Zealand, two countries that have New Zealand in particular, really strong renewable energy resources. But the discussion, of course, is about who gets access to those resources, who controls where they go um, and who benefits from them, who makes decisions about if new infrastructure is built. Um, who benefits and owns it and where and why and how. So in New Zealand, for example, many of us around the world think of hydroelectricity as a very green and renewable source of electricity. Um, and indeed, in many ways, compared to fossil fuels and burning coal, it absolutely is. But if you look at it from a cultural viewpoint or a decolonial viewpoint, for example, or in different countries, we see that sometimes hydroelectricity um, floods huge areas of farmland and displaces often marginalized populations, or in New Zealand, where I live, um, Maori communities. So the indigenous people of uh, the country have had a really negative um, interactions with massive hydro developments and sometimes see the in a cultural perspective, see waterways as as beings with their own mana or um, sacredness. And so damming them and changing the waterways has a whole resonance that's quite different than it is in, um, let's say, a Western setting like Canada or the United States. So there's some really interesting things going on sociopolitically in the energy sector. And I wanted to say that for those of you in the course who don't focus on energy as a, as a particular issue, not to um, be put off, I suppose, by the um, technical aspects of it. One of the goals of this module is to just in introduce some basic concepts. So what do we mean by distribution? What's a smart grid? How does that relate to the transmission? And by understanding a little bit about the system, you also start to understand how and why policy settings by the government are just absolutely crucial. And you also start to see how and why this is really a deep political economy issue, an issue of ownership, because over time in many countries, we've seen these waves of privatization and de Commencing. Things that used to be owned, let's say, by local municipalities became privatized, or that used to be owned by the government became privatized. And so what we have been seeing, maybe since, you know, the, the mid-90s or early 90s in some countries, is a re-municipalization in some places, a pushback, a development of local and community energy in the renewable sector, but also in countries like New Zealand, where I live, or province of Alberta here in Canada, um, you have cooperatives and community trusts owning distribution grids and becoming interested in things like electric vehicle charging or groups of citizens forming a cooperative to put up solar panels and then 
sell that to other groups of citizens. And some countries allow for those kinds of developments and some foreclose them. So we want to have really kind of geographically specific understandings of what's happening and then start relating those and telling those stories and see where the commonalities are. Um, one of the kind of framing ideas within this module is that of energy democracy, which is really increasing citizen participation. And that can be public participation as in the public sector, but also groups of individuals and citizens, indigenous communities, non-traditional energy actors to get them involved in discussing not just the infrastructure that is, but the infrastructure that could be. So opening up the imaginings a little bit. And in one of the resources, Sweeney talks about energy democracy as about a process of resisting, reclaiming and restructuring. So these three different forces at work, one to do with renewable energy, one to be about the pushback against fossil fuels in the context of climate change and rapidly accelerating climate change and the need for radical change. Um, and restructuring, so thinking about the political economy and ownership issues. And we have some really exciting um, assignments at the end, so a visualization and then answering questions about one or two projects. So trying to, to nail down not just the big picture, but think small again and think about how we can connect this to other issues. So I'm excited about the week and I'll talk to you in the comments. Lovely to meet you all and I hope to connect more. Bye.